Hello everyone and welcome to the Vuka Show. Today we are commemorating the HIV Vaccines Awareness Day. I have a panel of young people and I'm going to be introducing to you what this day is about. This day started in 1997 when the US President Bill Clinton then recognized the need for an HIV vaccine and propelled us to all think about what the research could be and the advocate for us to be able to get a vaccine. I quote from him that only truly, only a truly effective HIV vaccine would be able to limit and eventually eliminate the threat of AIDS. And the first HIV vaccine was then observed in 1998. Speaking of which, I don't wanna tell you how old I was then, but today we have a strictly youth panel that will be coming to you to discuss what where we stand in 2022 um, and also we'll be taking your questions on the HIV vaccine. What do you want to know? Um, you can comment with us on YouTube. We will try and make time to reply to your comments. So I'll be introducing to you Dr. Shelin Bywood, who is now working with the Partners in Health in Research Development in HIV. She's currently involved in clinical research um, of HIV prevention in adolescents and sexual reproductive health. Her passion is in uh, is deeply in health empowerment, making sure that everyone is empowered with information, particularly adolescents and youth. She also plays an essential role in COVID task force and leading her organization. So um, without any further ado, I would like Dr. Shaleen to greet everyone. And the first question that I want her to clarify, which is the one question that I know everyone is waiting for and wants to know, do we have an HIV vaccine in 2022? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Shalene. It's a great honor to be part of uh, this conversation today. And um, thank you, Itu, for the wonderful introduction. I'm humbled. And uh, you are asking about the first question about um, do we have the HIV vaccine currently? And uh, my answer is uh, currently, unfortunately, we do not have uh, HIV vaccine, despite the many research that has happened previously. And uh, as a scientist, right now, in collaboration with other scientists, uh, we are currently working hard to the development of a HIV vaccine. A vaccine takes closely 10 to 20 years, and uh, up to now, 30 years later, we don't have an HIV vaccine yet, uh, but there is hope. Yes, back to you. Okay. Um... Thank you so much. Uh, that coming from scientists, so we don't want any conspiracy theories. Doctor is saying that we don't have it yet, and we are working towards it. I would like to know what are the current developments, and where are we in terms of the research going towards having an HIV vaccine? Because as per the speech of President Bill Clinton, it is quite a vital and important thing um, towards HIV prevention. Thank you. As you have clearly stated, Itu, that the primary uh, aim right now is to have an HIV vaccine, both for prevention and treatment of those who are already infected with HIV. And so currently we have, um, as I've said, we have had vaccine trials going for the past 30 years. And uh, in 2009, we had an RV144, or the famously known as a Thai trial, which um, did an efficacy trial to see does this HIV vaccine work. And uh, this showed the findings from that clinical trial showed that uh, the HIV vaccine was 31% efficacious. Uh, despite it being low in terms of its effectiveness in protecting against HIV infection, this triggered a lot of further trials that are currently going uh, on uh, worldwide, globally, and uh, as uh, per the IRV, that is the International Aid Vaccine Initiative, we have a lot of clinical trials, just like the COVID vaccine trials that are currently ongoing. We are not giving up. We are having a lot of fight in terms of looking at the different technologies. If you look at that trial, we, uh, we are now currently um, 
working on the methodology of looking at uh, the technology, integrating technology and HIV. And the current studies that are currently ongoing, we have one even in Kenya currently where I am based, and uh, we are looking at something known as neutralizing antibody. Just to explain briefly is that uh, antibodies offer protection in our body against the various um, infections. And we even have childhood vaccines, for example, the polio vaccine, the measles vaccines, which have been shown to be effective against the childhood infections. And likewise for the HIV, we are now looking at something known as the broadly neutralizing antibodies. This is a technology where the antibodies, um, if uh, injected into our bodies, the question is, will it offer protection? Will the body generate and uh, will it be able to neutralize? Literally, um, uh, I can use the layman language, dissolve. When the, the, the affected person or the HIV uh, negative person and for the purpose of treatment, the HIV positive, when they receive this vaccine, is it going to dissolve the new infection in the body and prevent it from multiplying? And that is the question that is currently um, in many clinical trials, we have one known as IRVC100, which in the site that I'm currently based at in, uh, in Kenya is evaluating. That notwithstanding, we are also looking at, um, there is a group of HIV positive people who do not develop the active disease, despite them not using active antiretroviral therapy. And the question is, are they having some natural response against the HIV virus? We are still yet to answer that question. Uh, right now, the clinical trial that um, I know of right now currently, we are at a phase one. As a clinical trial, we have different phases, and this might take time. The RV144 took six years since 2009. It took six years. And right now, we are hopeful just that notwithstanding, I would say we still have other prevention strategies for HIV. It doesn't mean that uh, as much as the HIV vaccines are in the pipeline, we still have other multiple uh, strategies for HIV prevention. I would love to make uh, mention it in passing. We have uh, what we call PrEP, famously pre-exposure prophylaxis, where HIV and infected individuals take a daily pill to prevent them from uh, acquisition of HIV when they're exposed to those who have the virus. So that means uh, PrEP is effective in preventing up to 98% of HIV infection acquisition. And PrEP right now, because of the pill burden, the major challenge that has really triggered uh, the possibility of getting a vaccine once and for all, just the way you get a jab uh, in your childhood is that if we get this vaccine currently, there's a huge pill burden. You can imagine taking, a, once you are HIV infected, you are going to be taking that pill every single day for your lifetime. But with the HIV vaccine, hopeful, we'll be able to just get that, you get that job and it's going to offer you a protection whether it's a lifetime, we don't know yet. Are we going to get booster doses? We don't know yet. Science is in the pipeline. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, the consistent uh, use of uh, condoms. We have what we call PEP, which is post-exposure. And this has really benefited for the victims of uh, gender-based violence, especially the adolescent girls and young women. We also have... Um, uh, injectable PrEP, which is called Cabotegravia, and we have a dapivirine ring, which we are hopeful that finally we are going to be authorized into the different guidelines by the World Health Organization. Back to you, Itu. Thank you so much, Doc. I like it when someone is passionate because you've just covered all my following questions, which we're going to say, do we even have hope? for an HIV vaccine, I want you to think there is a young person listening from South Africa, a young person listening from Nigeria, from, you know, from Kenya, where you are from, and they want to know, right, if they should 
how can they help um, the advocacy towards an HIV vaccine, right? And, and is there a hope? But I also wanted to slot in a question which you've covered nicely. Uguti, what can I do to prevent um, HIV infection right now in 2022 on the 18th of May when there is no vaccine? So I'd like to know just one minute. Is there hope? What can I do to, to, to bolster the advocacy? Yes, yes, yes. There is hope. There is hope for HIV vaccine. And um, I would say the reason why we have hope, hope can only uh, yield good results with community involvement, with advocacy. Remember, for an HIV vaccine trial to be uh, successful, we have the voice of the community. We have this good community participation where we need uh, volunteers uh, in different clinical trials to engage with the different stakeholders and participate in the vaccine trials. I would really love to advocate for more and more people to empower the community that um, to participate in the different trials so that we can get the answer. Just like the COVID vaccine, which has shown to tremendously uh, give uh, blow down the infection for COVID-19. The same way, with the same concerted efforts in the community as youth, we can come up and join the global efforts in the vaccine trials and even in actual study participation in these trials to enable answer us answer these scientific questions. As I've said, we have the different presidential strategies. I advocate for PrEP. PrEP works, PrEP works. I would really feel bad for a young person to get HIV, yet we already have a WHO and FDA approved strategies for preventing HIV, which is currently a global pandemic and a burden. Back to you. Thank you so much. What I like about working with young people is that in such a short space of time, you get to be informed. Even me as an advocate now, I feel like I have a bit of science that I can use to stand with. I'm excited to introduce uh, the next speaker, who is my colleague at Africa Free of New HIV Infections, AFNI. Um, o Progress Akbola is a global health advocate uh, who is also an MBBS candidate at the University of Technology, Ladoke at Akintola. He has over five years of experience in working with young people and uh, HIV pre prevention, sexual reproductive health, and gender equality. In his work, he's attended a lot of prestigious conferences, including the ICASA conference that was held, um, that was held in Ikali, Rwanda in 2019, but he's also uh, internationally acclaimed as part of uh, the Real Society of Tropical Medicine that is based in the United Kingdom. Uh, and excitingly, last year he was selected by the BYM to be one of Africa's brightest minds who's driving bold ideas and action uh, in 2021. Uh, I think this is exciting work, but it's also work that comes from a young person who has been has experience of working with other young people. So just one question that I'd like to know from you is that you are a, a medical student, but you're also an advocate um, for sexual reproductive health and HIV prevention. Do, what do you think is the sense of urgency around having a vac an HIV vaccine? How urgent is it? Okay, uh, thanks so much for having me and uh, thanks for the uh, reading my bio. I'm actually quite uh, elated to be here live and to talk with fellow young people about the urgent need for HIV and AIDS. Uh, like uh, the first speaker has, has actually uh, talked about a couple of things about PrEP and about uh, pre preventive uh, measures to prevent uh, HIV and AIDS. But uh, regardless, uh, we still need to work on getting uh, vaccine because it's actually quite needed than ever. Because looking at the, uh, the rate of new HIV infections, it still remains uh, unacceptably high in Sub-Saharan Africa which accounts for 70% of global infection. That is, we have about 25.6 million people living with HIV in Sub-Saharan Africa, in which we know that South Africa and Nigeria are, are the top two countries with the highest number of people living with HIV and AIDS. And also, in addition, the continent has, has the highest incidence of HIV infection, which affects uh, 
which affect especially the adolescent, our girls, and then the young women. And also, uh, compared to other parts of the world, so Southern Africa has the highest number of HIV strains. We have the A, C, and D. And, uh, and then we all need to get involved in developing these future vaccines as it actually affects uh, our young people, the women, and also the uh, adolescents. And also, it has been uh, acclaimed to be the number one killer of women of, of reproductive age in Sub-Saharan Africa. And, uh, and uh, uh, looking at the likes of, of vaccine that we have for hepatitis uh, B, uh, for for instance, uh, having the vaccine, even with our uh, special to hepatitis, the uh, the person won't uh, contract uh, the virus. So having an age vaccine uh, and then giving pre for uh, special to HIV would uh, confidently uh, protect uh, people lacking access to basic health care, and also it will also help in the case of because there is a current uh, growing challenge of HIV drug resistance in Africa. So having a vaccine would actually help curb the drug resistance uh, challenge that we are currently uh, facing in Africa. And also uh, about 1.8 million adolescents worldwide are living with HIV, and nearly 80% of all new infections among adolescents are in sub-Saharan uh, Africa. So funding uh, HIV vaccine research and development in Africa, yeah, I, I see that as a very smart uh, public health investment. And, uh, giving us a safe, effective, and uh, accessible preventive uh, HIV vaccine to save uh, money over time by reducing the number of people that will also be in needing lifelong treatment. So with all of this, I strongly believe that uh, it is uh, it is quite uh, important and we really need to uh, support everybody working in developing this new vaccine because it will have uh, a lot of ripple uh, effect in making sure that we are we relieved earlier as as a uh, as an individual and then we build uh stronger communities because when uh, everybody is uh is safe and healthy uh, it will also uh, have uh some form of effect in the social economic development of the nation and the continent as a whole uh, thank you Thank you so much, Progress. And as a young person living in South Africa, where we have seen an increase on new HIV infections during on, on young people between the ages of 15 and 25 during COVID, I can testify to what you are saying that we need the HIV vaccine now. It's been almost 25 years since Bill Clinton made his speech. So I do think that now is the time to have progress on the HIV vaccine. Uh, to the viewers of Booker Show, you have heard from the expect. I hope you're now informed and ready to take decisions that will make you live a safe life and prevent you from getting an HIV infection. I just think from our, I'd like to thank our speakers without giving them any more chance to speak because I had promised you that this show will be short and informative. So thank you so much uh, to the organizers and everyone who's a speaker and to our viewers, stay informed. Thank you. <laughs>